2 Corinthians, be in chapter 5. Second Corinthians chapter 5. And as you're turning there, I do want to highlight um, every, there were some who were praying uh, for the event, but the preschool had their Christmas program, and it was uh, really well done. The kids all did a great job. They performed very well. The parents behaved, and Miss Vicky behaved as well. I don't know, where's Miss Vicky at? She's in the back. She can't even hear that joke. Uh, either way, she did set me up, though, because she had me uh, to introduce and then give the devotion, salvation message. And I flipped it open, and it says, Welcome to our program, the ABC Nativity. It was a spelling error, Nativity. But I thought she found something. She, she's very creative. She's always looking for something to k- get the kids' interest. And I'm thinking, oh, wow, the ABC Nativity. I'm glad I asked her because it was a spelling error. Uh, but either way, uh, it was a great time. Pray for uh, the preschool uh, parents, grandparents, and also uh, the kids as well. Um, such a good ministry. So, all right, Second Corinthians chapter five. We'll, uh, we'll be in there today. Second Corinthians chapter five. Um, I. Once upon a time, told Linda the message today was going to be about Onesimus, but I felt led to do a different message. Apologize, Linda, ahead of time. Uh, not hallelujah, but uh, either way, uh, you'll, you'll understand in a little bit. Uh, just felt the Lord leading in this area. I just want to talk about a couple of things with some conversations I've had over the, the week with kids and even adults and even uh, just... Um, Thinking about loved ones who are already with the Lord and things uh, just led me to this message. So, either way, here, here's a picture of a, two individuals, and I don't know if you ever went out to eat, but it's kind of a simple conversation. But an individual, and sometimes a conversation goes like this, and in, in ages, to, in the future here, uh, this might be a conversation that's going to take place, and it's, going, it's actually going to take place. Uh, here's an individual who says, uh, I hear the First National Bank is looking for a new teller. The second individual man said, I thought they just hired a new teller last week. And the guy said, right. That's the one they're looking for. See, what you have to understand is one day, that's gonna, that conversation is going to take place. There's a thing called the, the rapture, the resurrection. And there's going to be when the Lord comes back to the body of Christ and we're going to meet Him in the air the saved, the ones who have accepted Christ as their personal Savior, we're going to be with Him in, in glory land. Something we're all looking forward to. Hallelujah, right? Amen. But there's going to be individuals, that conversation will take place. But I want to talk about something that you and I, the reason for the season, right? I had a question the other day from a kid, what is the reason for the season? And we talked about it a little bit, about the Lord Jesus Christ. But another uh, reason for this season is one thing is that you and I have these vile bodies. I know, it's a vile body. Get over it. They stop working like they should, right? Um, They're not perfect. They get sick. Uh, I have three kids sick at home. Young kids, sick. Overnight, um, no sleep at all, sick. And you're saying... um, one day we're not going to have those bodies. We're going to have a glorious body like the Lord Jesus Christ, a perfect body. So today I want to talk about the body we're going to have. Because it's a body like Christ, the glory, our glorious body. And so it's going to be here in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5. And also you'll see a little bit of Philippians 3, uh, verses 20 to 21. But our main passage today is, on, is in 2 Corinthians Chapter 5, verse 1. Let's read it together. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up 
of life. Now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given us unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord, for we walk by faith and not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing, willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. This passage today has a little bit to do with uh, tent making, you could say. And here's a, an interesting picture here. A, uh, who likes camping? I don't. Because this is a story of my life in a lot of ways. Especially with the four kids, you're getting everything set, you always forget something. And typically, sometimes it's not daylight, it's nighttime when you're setting up the tent, right? And uh, there creates confusion, where's the tent pole, you know, why didn't you bring this, why didn't you bring that? But typically, when you get to the campsite, you're, you're hungry, right? And it becomes, you're hangry, you're upset, right? Um, and, and maybe you've been there in that case. Uh, but it's really hard to do putting a tent up with uh, someone else. And that's especially if you're hungry, you're tired, or, and you just want to eat and just sleep at the same time, which is you can't do, by the way, so don't try it. Uh, in, in a lot of ways, it could be raining, it could be uh, dark outside, like I said. Uh, you get the picture. But here's a picture of, obviously, a husband and a wife and... Um, if you've ever set up a, a tenant with a loved one or even a close friend, uh, sometimes you can get quite nasty with each, other, with, with each other, can't you? Right? I'm the only one. Great. Congratulations to me. All right. But either way, just because we're in the season, you know, the reason for the season is obviously Jesus Christ. But obviously we love to give gifts to each other. But just in case that you've ever been in this situation before, they have tons of uh, coffee mugs and such. Here's one that you can buy for your loved one. Sorry for what I said when we were trying to put up the tent. Uh, and there's lots of coffee mugs you can buy for your loved ones. But this might be something um, that you might buy. But I kind of refer to this passage, like I said, as uh, it's a spiritual camping trip. But what we're in today is you and I, uh, we're in this evil world amongst us, right? This is not our home. We have a heavenly home. Uh, but we're living in it. We're ambass ambassadors for Christ. And it's our spiritual uh, tent. This is our spiritual tent. You know, it's a, these are not our eternal uh, bodies. We have a body like going to look like the Lord Jesus Christ. And in a lot of ways, we're, we're tenting in, in this uh, earthly, earthly place. But I want you to, uh, again, so here's the passage. We know, right, that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved... We have a building of God and house, not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. But in order to get kind of more of a context of uh, going, you know, chapter 4 kind of flows right into chapter 5 here in your Bible. But I want you to kind of get a little context here of verse 16 of chapter 4. The Apostle Paul writes to us here, God from the Apostle Paul to you and I. He says, for which cause we faint not... But though our outward man perish, yet what? The inward man is renewed, what? Day by day. The context is dealing with our bodies, right? And it's going to keep flowing into chapter 5 as well. Our bodies are getting older, they're getting weaker, and, but our inward man, which is Christ in us, the hope of glory, gets what? Stronger. How does that get stronger, by the way? Faith comes by hearing and hearing from what? The Word of God, right? We walk by faith, not by sight. We don't walk blindly, right? Uh, we, we walk allowing the Lord, Word of God to affect our lives, to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Okay? And again, it's, it's God's Word that's going to, be, uh, to energize us by His, the living Word. Verse 17 then says, For our light afflictions, which is what? But for a moment, worketh for us a far more and exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Again, 17 deals with light afflictions, the trials and tribulations we all go through. And that Paul, the Apostle Paul calls these light afflictions in our life. They're in, in, in why are they called light afflictions? Because they're very short compared to what? All eternity, right? You ever go through an issue in life and the next thing you know it's over and you're like, wow. And it's like it's never happened, right? It happens all the time. Again, it's 
it's, Paul says these are light afflictions. And I like to, to take note here that the Apostle Paul, if you just turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 11, he says light hour. So he's including himself with these light afflictions. Well, let's look at some of the Apostle Paul's light afflictions. Light afflictions. They're very light, he says. Chapter 11, verse 23. Again, talking about the false apostles, deceitful work for workers transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. Again, uh, talking about these individuals, these false teachers. He goes on, verse 23, Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. In labors more abundant, in stripes more about, of, above measure, in prisons more frequent, in deaths often. Of the Jews five times received I what? Forty stripes, save one. Paul received a lot of beatings. Thrice he was beaten with rods. Once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeyings often in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among what? False brethren. In weariness, in painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. What you see here is that you see the Apostle Paul lists some of his, what? Light afflictions. The Apostle Paul was in prison. Not for, not for what? Stealing. He was in prison for doing what? Preaching the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? In other countries, other than modern USA right now, that we live in, again, we're losing our freedom, so it could take place at some point in our lifetime. Hope not. In other countries, they are not allowed even to mention the name of Jesus. They're not allowed giving a track that has the birth of Jesus Christ, the reason for the season. They're not allowed in some ways going to rest homes to sing carols. They're not allowed doing it. Because it's a communist country. Dictatorship. They get told what to do and what they can say and what they can, can believe in. Now again, there's missionaries in these foreign lands and, they, and they're risking what? Their lives to preach the Lord Jesus Christ. And they call them light afflictions. Now, I'm not judging anybody here in our light afflictions, but our light afflictions in some ways are a little bit light compared to the Apostle Paul. But we all go through light afflictions. We all have stressors in our lifetime. And again, how does a light affliction may work? Well, it could be cyberbullying. It could be someone making fun of you. Someone not respecting the fact that you're praying maybe after, during, before a meal. Someone saying they don't believe in God, get that out of here. They're not, again, when you preach Jesus Christ, they're not rejecting you. Who are they rejecting? The Lord Jesus Christ. That's who they're rejecting. We're His representatives. And the Apostle Paul calls these in things light afflictions. And again, light afflictions, you know, we have our aches and pains in our bodies too. They're light afflictions because one day we're going to have a glorious body. Okay, our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. That there is more glory that awaits us. And God's going to award us with those things in eternity future. But as we continue to read, verse 18, While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are, are not seen are what? Eternal. We bring nothing into this world and we will bring what? Nothing out of it. That's what it, that's saying. Everything states that. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. It states, the things that you see are temporal. And the things that you don't see are eternal. And to get a better understanding of what that means, the Apostle Paul then continues with chapter 5 and verse 1. He continues with this, and he says, Our earthly house of this tabernacle, again, he's talking about our body, your body, it's getting old. It's going to die. Those are the facts. Right? And you know, this, the curse still exists. You, you Sin and death still exists, right? 
anywhere you go. Sin and death. It is. And it's unfortunate. But it's, the, it's what happens until the ages have come, eternity, future. When, but the fact is, this, this, the curse still exists. And you and I will die if the rapture doesn't take place. And that is what this passage is telling us. You are tenting in this world. You are camping out. Now, I've been told by many individuals, many older saints, not to get old. And as my kids are getting older, I think I'm getting older. Right? Yeah, I'm getting older. It's kind of what it is. Until the Lord comes back, that's what's going to happen. And I always say this, though, well, there's only two ways, right? There's two, two things, uh, only two options that I have. One, death, absence from the body is present with the Lord, or the Lord comes back for us right now. And that's something I think we're all hoping for, right? The Apostle Paul was hoping for it in his day as well, okay? He's hoping for that as well. And so we know that our earthly house, this tabernacle, were dissolved. We have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. We're all waiting for the adoption, okay, to, to, to with the redemption of our body. We want a new glorified body. And you and I, our bodies are getting older. And I'll never forget, that hit me really hard about when we started a church softball team. And I rounded second base and boy, my hamstring just pop. And I fell over like a dead deer, got shot. And everybody's screaming, Liz, Liz, Aaron fell. She didn't move. Well, she's a nurse. She sees all the major stuff. He's fine. Put some ice on it. But my leg hurt for days. It never hurt like that before. But again, it's because the body is getting older. One day I'm going to have a glorified body where my hamstrings aren't going to pop. Okay? And I, can't, I cannot wait for that. For sure. And again, the Apostle Paul is telling us this, that your bodies are getting older. His body's getting older. He's got some, a lot of light afflictions, a lot of beatings. He's taken his fair share of punishment for sure. Okay? And he says one day he's going to have a glorified body like the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? And he continues through the writings, okay, of our Apostle, beloved Apostle Paul, that we are going to get a body. Its body is of God. It's not made with hands. It's eternal in the heavens. It's a spiritual body. And it's the body that we have. Is, again, the body that we have just glanced at it in 1618 is getting older. Okay? And so this body, we know, is going to die. And it's of the first body. It's of, it's of the first Adam. It's a natural body. I have it on the screen for you to save some time. We're going to read verse 45 and then verse 50. But it states, and so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made what? The living soul, the last Adam, Jesus Christ, was made a quickening spirit. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot what? Inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit what? Corruption. Okay? Our fleshly bodies, what you and I have right now, won't cut it in paradise. It won't. It will not. We need a new body. That's a spiritual body. Our body is made, a body made without hands. A body that will last throughout all eternity in heaven. And we're told that we will have a body just like our living Savior. And I said it before, but Philippians 3, verse 20 and 21, it tells us, For our conversations where? In heaven. From whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Who shall what? Change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto whose? Unto His glorious body, according to the working whereby He is able even to subdue all things unto Himself. Merry Christmas, by the way. Isn't that something to be excited about? The reason for the season is the Lord Jesus Christ and what He's done for us on that cross through His death, burial, and resurrection. Belief in that. You can have, what, forgiveness, sins, and eternal life? You, you're dwelt with the Holy Spirit of God to the day of redemption when we get our glorified bodies like the Lord Jesus Christ. Merry Christmas. That's something to be excited about. The reason for the season. You want to know the antidote for our aches and pains? The antidote is this. Ready? 
Our bodies are failing. Life is rough, but life is short. Nothing you see is eternal, so let's quit being so fixated on the worldly things. We're to allow the inward man to be renewed day by day. We're to keep our focus on heaven. Colossians 3, 1 to 4 talks about, you know, we're always to be looking for our blessed Savior in the clouds. Always to be looking up. You know, seek those things which are above, where Christ sits on the what? The right hand of God. That's where our focus is to be. Titus 2.13 tells us that you will be looking for that blessed hope. Because why? It's when you see the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And it's when you see all of our loved ones who are already with the Lord. And it's when we get our glorified bodies. Okay? Now, this will not take place, our glorified bodies, until... The day of redemption, where we're raptured out of here. Verses I can tell you, Romans 8, 23, Ephesians 1, 14, Ephesians 4, 30. We have the Holy Spirit of God seals us until the day of redemption, right? The day we're going to get our new bodies. And again, we, it was bought and paid for by the blood of who? Jesus Christ. We will switch out this vile body on this day for a glorious body. A body that will have no aches and no pains. Could you imagine that being a commercial on television? I can provide you a body with no aches and pains. We should do it, right? We should be able to pack the house. But unfortunately, we live in a world of some lot of ungodly people. We live in a world that Satan wants to see just go to hell. He has blinded. The, the eyes of the lost. Look at a Second Corinthians chapter 4 here in verse 3. This is why it is so important to not just celebrate Christmas in December, to celebrate the reason for the season, but we should be celebrating the reason for the season all year long. Jesus Christ. He's life. Because if our gospel be hid, verse 3, what? It is hid to them that are what? Lost. In whom the God of this world, Satan, had blind the minds of them which believed not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earth and vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and what? Not of us. It's the gospel that saves, not us. It's the Lord Jesus Christ and what He's done for us on that cross is what saves us. Not me. Not you. We're the messengers. And we're to give that message. If you want to see your neighbors... Brothers, sisters, grandpa, grandma, friends, someone on the street with you in heaven to have this glorious body. You have to share the glorious message of God's grace, what Christ did for them on the cross. And so back to our passage, though, the Apostle Paul is looking forward to this day. It's something that he desires to happen right now. Away, Because once you're resurrected, once the body of Christ is resurrected off this earth, we meet the Lord in the air, so shall what? We ever be with what? The Lord comfort one another with these words. That's what 1 Thessalonians 4, 13, 18 talks about. It talks about we're going to have our glorified bodies then. But I also like to think about this. If we're going to have a glorious body like the Lord Jesus Christ, well, we have a little bit of a picture Right? In God's word, what Jesus Christ and his resurrection with his spiritual body. Let's look at a couple of these things on the screen. Jesus Christ in resurrection with his spiritual body. Well, one thing, he could be touched, right? There's some verses there for you. He sat on furniture, he ate, and he also just stepped out of, he stepped out of the, the reality. Again, talking, again, the disciples here. He's able to, you know, be there or not be there. No door can lock them up. There's some verses there. We don't have time to go to them. 
But again, it's this body is a it's a powerful body. It's a spiritual body. It's a glorious, glorious body. It's going to be made for what? The heavens. We're, we got to we're seated in where heavenly places. And this body is what? Let's read it. First Corinthians fifteen fifty three and 54 tells us for this corruptible must put on what? Incorruption. It's going to happen. And this mortal must what? Put on what? Immortality. It's going to happen. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. If you've accepted Christ as your personal Savior and what He's done from the cross, this is going to happen. Amen? I don't know. That didn't sound really good at all. Are you not excited about it? I mean, are you not having aches and pains? Someone break out the baseball bats. Let's play some good old kickball right now. Let's pull some hamstrings. It's going to happen. This body is a glorified body. It's a glorious body. And it's through this truth that we have in verse 2. In 2 Corinthians 5. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is... From heaven. The Apostle Paul says in this we groan. He's putting himself in that. And I put myself in there too. We groan. It'd be great to have a glorified body with no aches and pains, right? The groan means to with grief, grudge, sigh. And he's earnestly desiring for it. Intensively crave possession. He, he desires it. Greatly longs for it. And what do you desire? Food? You desire a glorified body. Glorified body. Paul desires that. We, what do we desire? We're, we're, going, we're all going to die, right? If the rapture doesn't happen. We're tent making right now. Right? And then Paul says, I desire for this to happen. Right? I want the Lord to come back so I can have my glorified body. I mean, how many people pray that the rapture happens right now? Only when you're going through stress, stress issues, right? When things get rough, we're all like, Lord, you better come right now, right? My son puked six times last night. I guarantee you I was on the couch saying, Lord, just come back now. Take me now. Take us all. This is miserable. Sick kids are not fun to have in the house. I'd rather have a glorified body. But Paul here is saying, he goes, I want my body now. I don't just want to die and go to heaven and wait because, again, that's what will happen. He goes, I want, I want to skip death. I want to be raptured out with my glorified body and get to serving God throughout all eternity right now. I cannot wait to have this body. That's why he says, for in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. He wants to know pains. He wants to know aches. He wants to know back problems. He wants no feet issues. He wants no heart issues. No, you name it. And listen, we all have something wrong with us. Our bodies are temporal. They're vile. But in order to get this body, we need the Lord to come back right now. And Paul continues to go on. I'd rather be clothed upon than to be what? Found naked. Now, and to keep with this context here of this passage, Paul has been talking about temporary things. He's been talking about about our bodies, that our bodies are temporal right now, that we need a spiritual body, and we get this body from the Lord Jesus Christ. This spiritual glorified body is, a clo is the clothing that Paul is talking about. Now, I want you to do note this. Paul does say regardless. Even though he wanted his glorified body, he was confident and willing to be unclothed for with the Lord. Look at 2 Corinthians 5, verse 8. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and, be, and to be what? Present with the Lord. Paul was not saying that he was scared to die. He wasn't saying that if he died right now, it's not a gain. Because we know in Philippians 1, verse 21, for to me to what? Is to live as Christ and to die is what? gain. It's far much better to be with the Lord right now than it is right now. Paul acknowledges that. 
But he also is acknowledging, too, that we're not going to get our glorified bodies, a spiritual body, to do all the things that God has in store for us in heaven until when? The rapture. Okay? But we don't get that until the rapture, when Christ comes back for all members of the body of Christ. That's why we're to be looking for that blessed hope. Titus 2, verse 13 tells us, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. What a glorious day that's going to be, right? I'm excited for that. I hope you are too. But Paul desires for this. I de- he goes, I desire my glorified body right away. But the question has to pop in your head, or maybe it's only in my head, and that's okay. If and when we die, and yes, verse 8, as a friend of the body is present with the Lord, praise God. But if you die, you don't have your glorified body yet. You don't have your spiritual body. So what are you doing? What are you wearing? Well, I already made a couple of verse, verse here. I have it on the screen. We're with the Lord, right? We're, we're with the Lord. You're, you're resting. You're not working yet, but you will. Okay. And, but I believe that if you take this verse here, again, God's Word says in 2 Timothy 3, 16, 17, all Scripture is given by the inspiration of God. So you can take uh, some things from this. Again, I understand that this verse on the screen, Revelation 6, 11, is dealing with, is related to the nation of Israel. And that the nation of Israel and the body of Christ are two completely different programs and destinies. We have a heavenly hope, they have an earthly home. But... I want you to see this real quick. Revelation 6, verse 11. Here you have 144,000 who have died. Again, this is uh, during in the tribulation. And they're referred to in this passage who are awaiting their resurrection after Christ's second coming. They're given white robes and God tells them to rest a little while. And they will go to work again for their Lord, but not only after the second coming for Israel and on the earth. Again, maybe a little bit of food for thought, study it out. But here you have these individuals, okay, again, not dealing with the body of Christ, but these individuals, again, they don't have their, you know, their bodies yet, but they're in white robes. Maybe that, you know, what are we doing when you're absent from the body, present with the Lord? You don't have your glorified body yet. I kind of believe, I believe it's, you know, I'm not going to be dogmatic on this. You should be a Berean and study it out. But again, what are you doing? You don't got your glorified bodies. Well, you have a little bit of a verse here. Maybe in a white robe, hanging out, chilling out, relaxing with the Lord and with all the brothers and sisters in Christ. Study it out. Be a Berean. But it's Paul's desire here in 2 Corinthians 5 to be clothed upon. And he hopes and prays that the Lord Jesus Christ will come back. It's his desire to have a body that will have no need for a change. And it's the blessed hope that he was waiting for, and it's the blessed hope we are waiting for. That's why in 2 Corinthians 5, 4, it tells you this, for, that, for we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that what we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Again, it was Paul's, hope to go directly from this life to his glorified body without facing death. And this, ha- this has to be every believer's desire as well. It's that blessed hope we're to be looking forward to. Paul obviously didn't get to experience the blessing of being translated directly from this life to the glorified body. But knowing this, God through Paul tells us in the next couple of verses, 6 to 8, we're very confident knowing while we're here and home in the body, we're absent from the Lord. We walk by faith, not by sight. Uh, I didn't read verse 5. Now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given us the earnest of the Spirit. He's very confident. Come, and that comes from the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and the knowledge that we will be with the Lord. Either by death or by his coming. Either way, you're who? You're of the Lord's. Nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. And so either by death or or by the rapture, our best days are yet to come. And I want to read you this real quick. 
A bright young girl of 15 was suddenly cast upon a bed of suffering, completely paralyzed on one side and nearly blind. This is true. She heard the family doctor say to her parents as they stood by the bedside, she has seen her best days, poor child. The little girl said, no, doctor, my best days are yet to come when I shall see the Lord Jesus Christ in his beauty. That's our hope. Christ rose from the dead to give us a pledge of our own rising and with a glorified body. The resurrection is the great antidote for fear of death. Nothing else can take its place. Riches, worldly pleasures, or pursuits. None can bring us consolation in the dying hour. Are we placing our hope in worldly things? All these you see, me, this building, these hymn books, these screens, they're temporal. You and I were tenting, we're camping, just temporarily abiding here. But praise God, praise God that we have the blessed hope of the Lord Jesus Christ coming back for His body. And that we're going to have a glorious body that is just like His. That day is a day of redemption of our body, our glorified heavenly body. And you know what? That's beautiful. And that is a day I'm looking forward to. And this is what makes it even sweeter to say Jesus is the reason for the season. Let's keep looking up. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love and grace. We thank you for just the amazing truth, Father, that this is not our home. That we have a home in heaven and that these bodies are temporal. And 